Though events were to remould the future of the design, at this stage of its development it was hampered by its engine. The Allison's power died as the plane climbed, leaving it sluggish and unresponsive. Pilots enthused about its performance at low level, where it was speedy and agile. In fly-offs with captured German planes, it had held its own very competently until the altitude soared. Therefore, it was logical to utilize it in low-level missions, which in the main were tactical missions, support of ground troops, photographic reconnaissance, or flying cover on a battlefield. It was a simple step to recast them as dive bombers, and they were effective tactical support aircraft. It was evident that the airframe had many virtues, but the actual plane was a limited thing, and it was given tasks that seemed to fit its limitation. the Mustangs were to prove vulnerable. They could be brought down by a very minor hit from any weapon because of their water cooling, radiators and other ducting. The radial engine fighters like the P-47 were better suited to low level work in that they were very hard to bring down with light ground fire. As dive bombers the Mustangs were not a success. The moment when the plane broke its dive left it very vulnerable as a prime target that had advertised its arrival during the dive and was now presenting its most tender aspect. If the Mustang avoided the set piece of the diving attack and simply roared along at low level, its speed protected it from all but the most proficient marksmen. In active service, most of the A36 dive brakes were wired shut and the planes were used in other ways. Here in this early training stage, before the planes were deployed in significant numbers, we can appreciate both the accuracy of the dive bomber and its dangerous exposure. In active service, the A36s and other Allison Mustangs used in low-level missions were powerful weapons. A squadron of Mustangs made a very effective punch as airborne artillery. In addition to the 500 dive bombers, 1,083 of the Allison-powered Mustangs were made, all being best used in low-level roles. machine guns delivered an accurate focused firepower in strafing and the A36 groups were also credited with the perfection of skip bombing using delayed fuses and dropping the bomb short of the target so that it bounces into position to explode. In some ways, the early Allison engined Mustangs, including the A36, have been overlooked because of their shortcomings and because of what the design went on to achieve once their vices had been eliminated. However, the worth of the work of the photographic planes should not be belittled, and as here in India, in several important campaigns of the war, the A36s were critical factors in the successful pursuit of Allied victory. As the Allies fought their bloody way across Burma to open land links with the beleaguered forces in China, the nature of the terrain and the lack of any roads or railways saw the troops on the ground become almost totally reliant on the air, 
for supplies and for artillery. There was no way to carry anything bigger than a mortar with them, and certainly not a howitzer. But the Mustangs were there. With forward air control direction, the A-36 pilots were able to deliver accurate tactical support and clear obstacles ahead of the troops. Their constant harassment kept the enemy unbalanced and undermined the worth of the continuing establishment of strong points along their lines of retreat. Few airfields became the sites of critical battles in the campaign, and as soon as the troops had established control, engineers were sent in to reopen the field. To fly in tractors and other vehicles, the dangerous and wasteful gliders were used, and runways were hurriedly repaired so that the transport planes could be landed safely. While this footage was being filmed, Japanese troops were still dug in and fighting a fierce rearguard action less than two miles away, and a stream of wounded was constantly arriving at the base for airlifting out with the returning Dakotas. Had the Japanese had any artillery, they would have been able to shell the airfield from their positions. But instead, emergency medical stations could function in the open beside the runways, with only the occasional air raid to threaten procedures. economic might of the Allies and their material resources, the damage from a raid like this figured little in the overall scheme of things. The situation on the ground was far more affected during the monsoons, the wet season. Then, with floods on every river, the losses of supplies were enormous. The road that was being pushed through the jungle in the wake of the advancing infantry became impassable, and the airfields became unmaintainable. During the monsoons, on both sides, things ground to a halt in the mud, in conditions so bad that even the legendary C-47s found themselves unable to operate. To fly planes in these conditions required daring, determination, skill and lots of luck The Allison engine Mustangs, for all their limitations, were regarded by their pilots with great affection, and so long as they were used within their restrictions, they were very able. They were also a pleasure to fly, responsive and urgent but very controllable and well behaved. Reports on the plane from 1941 on had constantly enthused about its performance when its engine was delivering adequate power. And in retrospect, it seems inevitable that the virtues of the airframe would suggest to someone that the plane be given a better engine. The engine that was eventually suggested in mid-1942 was the Rolls-Royce Merlin, the same engine as the illustrious Spitfire.